Hello, my name is Tom Mueller, and I am one of the assistant directors of the Geotech Center. Today, we're going to look at geocoding. We're going to define what geocoding is, look at the parts that go into geocoding, examine the process and possible errors, and finally, look at application. The definition of geocoding is all about taking a description and applying it to a geographic location. This can be a zip code, a city, or a street address. Now we're going to look at specifically geocoding using street addresses. This can be done with a single address or a whole table of addresses and we define this as batch matching. There are three parts to geocoding that you need. First a reference data set, then an address locator, and a table of addresses. So for the reference data set, this helps us actually geocode the descriptors. The address locator acts as the tool to make sure all those parts are where they need to be to process the geocoding. And finally, the table of addresses, those are our descriptors. The reference data set for geocoding a street file starts off with a center street file. This is a street file that has line segments. The line segments are divided by intersecting streets, barriers, political boundaries. Now what you will find is a lot of these center street line files are free or sometimes certain governmental agencies will ask you to pay for them. So for example, the city of Pittsburgh and the city of Philadelphia, you can get their center street files for free. Now what started this all off was in 1990, the United States Census came up with the Topologically Integrated Geographic Encoding and Reference System, otherwise known as TIGER. This is the first nationwide digital data set that had streets, roads, railroads, and boundaries. And as people got their hands on it, they started to add value to this particular data set. The Tiger file set the stage for things like Google Maps or any other type of address searcher that you have used in your time. So what are some of the attributes that come with a center street line file? Well, the first one is obviously the name of the street. And then you'll have a range of addresses. So within those line segments, you will have sort of the starting point, which may be 100, and the ending point of that line segment, which may be 199. You will have the type of street. Is it a street, an avenue, a drive, a boulevard? Also, you may have prefix and suffix with your address, North Main Street. And finally, you will have a city, state, and zip code. So here is an example of a center street line file. This is for the city of Philadelphia, and what you can see is the prefix, the street name, the street type, zip code, left and right, we'll talk about that later, and that left F add, left to add. What that is is L underscore F is the left from, and L underscore T is the left to. The R underscore F obviously is right from, and R underscore T is right to. So on the left hand side of the street, it runs from 1300 to 1322. And from the right side of the street, it runs from 1301 to 1323. Now we take that center street line file and we put it into this tool that we call an address locator. And the address locator allows us to decide what the parts are we want this locator to use. And the other thing is, you can decide to do a one range or dual ranges. So on that last exercise, we saw a left and a two. That is for a dual range. But sometimes you may just have a from and a two, not having left or right. And that way you can use a one range. Let me show you an example. In the one range, you can see there is only 100 to 199. And by doing that, the geocoded point will end up right in the middle of your line. If you have a left or right and right node, then the geocoded point will end up on the correct side of the street. This reminds me of years ago when we were driving to different locations and I would ask my wife when we had got into a neighborhood, okay, what on your side of the car, what is it, odd or even? And here is an example of an address locator in ArcGIS Pro. You can see from left, it finds that it's L underscore F, et cetera, and two left. One thing I want to highlight here is if you look at that full street name, you see where it says ST underscore name? 
please be very careful when you check your center street line file. Several times the field name will not be as obvious as that and your address locator may pick up a different field to use as the street name. So please check that out before running your geocode. Here is my table of addresses. These are universities within the city of Philadelphia and you can see I have the name, I have the address, the city, state, and zip code. Now one thing to remember is in the geocoding process it uses linear interpolation which means it takes that line segment and divides it equally. So in that 100 to 199 it's going to put 150 Main Street right in the middle. However, due to parcel size or physical barriers 150 may be actually closer to 199. So it is important sometimes to go and ground truth your data. Here is the result of the geocoding. You can see my streets in the city of Philadelphia and all of those points represent the universities in that. So here you can see I've highlighted one of the points and one of the points says, okay, this is LaSalle University. What did they do? The geocoder took that street name. Okay, here's our street name. All right, is it an avenue or is it a street or is it a drive? It's an avenue. Okay, now we've got that. Then let's look at the prefix. Okay, it's west and not east. And then took that line segment, where in that line segment is LaSalle University and placed it right where it needed to be. Now, besides misspellings, there are also other problems that can happen within the geocoding. Again, obviously I think we all, as I just said, misspellings. We actually had a police officer when we were doing crime mapping and he put a little loop on the end of his N and some of the students thought it was Main Street. Instead of it being M-A-I-N, they were typing up M-A-I-N-E. And here's the problem with that. That particular town did have a Main Street, M-A-I-N, and a Main Street, M-A-I-N-E. So you have to be very careful with your spellings. Number two, how is the street name represented? Is it, when it says first, is it one with an ST? Is it one or does it spell out first? Another particular issue is the prefix issue. Are you on north or south or east or west? I remember one time my wife and I were going to a location and we thought we were at the proper place, 176 Main Street, except we needed to be at 176 West Main Street and we were at 176 East Main Street. And finally, always check your street type. Uh, the classic story I tell my students is I remember my wife and I were on vacation, we were at a coastal town and I had the key to the condominium we had rented out, turned the key, nothing happened. And so I called the condominium place, I said look I'm at 33 Beach Street, this is where I'm supposed to be and the key doesn't work. And they said well the key should work, I don't know what's going on. Well as I took a closer look I was on Beach Avenue and not Beach Street. So that gives you an example of the issues when dealing with street type. And there are plenty applications that use geocoding. Businesses use that to target market customers. I don't know if you know this, but there are certain states that sell driver's license addresses. And businesses geocode those addresses to decide where to send out their flyers. Police departments. We have done crime mapping for local police departments, pinpointing where those crimes are and then examining the pattern of that. And finally, real estate agents. Uh, if you look at, for example, realtor.com, you type in a town of where you are looking for a house and it will give you particular houses with those street addresses. And that is very important, obviously, as moving forward. I hope this helped clear up any issues you have with geocoding. And if you'd like more information, please check out the Geotech Center's model courses, Introduction to Geospatial Technology, Unit 4, Creating Spatial Data. Thank you very much.